A very good evening and thank you for joining us. Welcome to the program. We're coming to you from the Kampala Serena Conference Center Nile Room. And tonight we'll be talking about pre-wedding conversations. What advice are young people taking? So your friends gang up and organize a bridal shower and you're surprised. And well, what conversations take place there? What, are, what useful advice are you getting from there? What, what <coughs> are they actually telling you that will help you? on the journey that you're about to embark in the next couple of days. One woman's thread on Twitter got us thinking about this conversation. Linda Mwesigwa. Linda, thank you for coming for the show. Linda is a youth mentor. Thank it's you good for to have you. Me. <laughs> I, I'm really curious as to what sparked this off, but we'll get to it. Uh, on the panel tonight, we also have Evelyn Kateme, who is also known as Sengali Net. She's a journalist by profession. She's a businesswoman. She's a wife and a mother. Sengali Net, welcome. Thank you, Josephine. All right, and we have Brian Semanda, who is a certified sex and beauty therapist and likewise a certified herbalist with an experience that has spanned over five years, offering lasting beauty tips to thousands of women and hundreds of men, <coughs> helping them restore joy in their relationships and marriages through his timeless counseling. Brian, welcome. Thank you. Let's say it as it is. All right, well, this, this tweet that Linda sent out, and this is how it started. It, she says, I've had a painful conversation that has reminded me exactly why I'm a bit uncomfortable with bright showers, a thread. And then Linda goes on and goes on, and then she says, while I'm always glad when the words of wisdom session is done, I'm embarrassed to have to be in the presence of hired singers. So let's start from there, Linda. I've attended a lot of bridal showers, and um, you've come to a point in, you know, the sessions where you have a same <coughs> talking, and you think, okay, we're going to have a conversation on marriage, on um, all the aspects of marriage, as, you know, a, a married person to other people who are going to get married. And then before you know it, the conversation is just sliding into the bed. And you're wondering, so it's the bed, the bed, and the bed, and that's it we're all done. So I'm thinking, all right, the house is bigger than the bedroom. Why can't we do this better for our young people? <laughs> Why can't we get them to realize that um, where you're going is, is, is beyond the bedroom? <coughs> Matter of fact, even in the bedroom, there's much more done than, you know. And then um, also beyond your house. As a relationship, you actually relate with more people beyond your house and more other systems beyond your house. You have financial investments, you have uh, extended families that you come from, you have, you, you might have children from your previous relationships and you're co-parenting with some other people. So there's other people that you're relating with in your relationship. There's much more than just, you know, that That's sub, it. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. How many bridal showers have you have you been to? Enough. I'm 27. You're 27. So yes, like it's the season. Say, since you were maybe 23. <laughs> yes, it's the season. So <laughs> every month you are at a bridal shower. Now I have put them on hold because I just I, I can't be the one in the room, you know, gritting my teeth and yeah. And the singers are speaking. Okay, what is the point of a bridal shower? I think let's start from there. The bridal shower. Uh, it's just because these days everything is pumped up in uh, style. People do serious parties for these. And uh, mostly, I would think a bridal shower must be that kind of meeting that is supposed to be ideally sharing issues that are happening. Tell you what, I've been in, I've been in bridal showers <coughs> where there are more married people and a few single girls. And the horrible story is the married people always give the contradicting stories in marriage. You know, you're trying to give this lady tips how to keep it running. They're like, no way, that's not realistic. We'll get there and it's not working. Maybe it's because they're married, they've been there and they've actually seen that maybe that's not working and that's why they're contradicting what you're saying. You tell somebody, saying. please respect your husband. If you want peace in a marriage, simply respect. Coming from a Christian back background, it is the only scripture to, uh, talks about this whole thing in the Bible is respect your husband as a wife. So you say respect your husband and the married woman in there will bring on a line eh, of like, you're wasting time to these young girls getting married to respect their husband. So in a short while, it's supposed to be giving people the realistic end of story because you don't know what I know. I know certain things. I have seen marriages break because of simple things, because he didn't pick you up, because he didn't pick your call. And it, it, marriage ends up because she didn't cook the right meal I want. 
<laughs> so because we are in a, a generation of people that have been mentored differently, people have grown up differently, some men are raised up to be more physical than emotional, yet women are very emotional. So a man walks out of the marriage simply because the woman expects them to say hello, how are you doing, I mean, I mean, just be open. But do you really think that it's honestly always just that one little thing and they walk out, or it's a culmination no, of, it's, of it's things? it's a growth of things. To tell you what, yesterday I was settling with people, like two people came, married people, and the reason why she's walking out is one, this guy can never say sorry. And then the guy says, how do you expect me to say sorry? And the girl says, T say sorry and explain why you are sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know how women be? And this guy says, I say sorry and I'm like, that's it, I won't worry. And she wants me to be there and say sorry for doing this and this and this and this. And I'll not do it again. And that's our point. They are fighting because he can't say sorry. So when we are in doing bridal showers, we try to draw a line. We are always going to disagree. But how do you deal with this argument? Because we don't have the same thing. Is it like how she said, it's a thread of bed, 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 bed? Everyone has a, an expertise in things. Josephine, I can give you milk, tea to prepare it, and I give the same to another person, and you'll have different results. You know that? The same as marriage. So because we have different marriage, <coughs> different units, when we are in bridal showers, we personally, I don't know about other singers, other people, personally, I'm trying to draw lines. Tell, you know what? Stuff is always going to be hard, but this is how you deal with hardness. The bridal shower, they will take this girl that is going to get married. Somewhere with the... Um, her aunties, the singers that were sisters to the father, they were called singers. So they would talk to this lady on what to expect. Because she has not been there before. So she would be told what to expect there and how to handle certain issues. Because now she's going to meet very different families. This is a person that I've not been living with, not home, that I've met. Definitely they have their values. You also have, their val you also have your values and you're both different. So they will tell you, everyone, there will be about maybe three or four, and they will all tell you maybe their experiences and how they managed. Just in case it gets to you too, you will know how to manage. Now, the, the girls think, the, they are saying girls are uh, old-fashioned. I don't know why most people think like that. And uh, they also don't know what to do now because they think they also have got failed marriages and they think they can't be told anything by them. So they want someone else. And I think even the world has gone so evil that most girls think they are saying girls don't wish them well. So they feel it is better to hire someone who will just come in, be paid to do a certain service, and they have no attachment with them. They just give them what they think, and that is it. I think a lot of people look at a bridal shower as a fun evening with the girls out. We're going to exchange presents, and then, of course, the singer is going to come in and say a few things and go away. We exchange the our presents. presents as yeah. well are also the part of that Okay. And then, <laughs> Seriously. and then the conversation ends. But are we not mixing things? So now we have um, girlfriends, because now all of these girlfriends are going to have an opportunity to speak, and each of them is going to come with their own piece of advice. The girls all speak, but I usually prefer that I first speak, then they come in as questions. My sessions are usually participative. We both participate. My session takes three hours. And uh, it doesn't only... Actually, when you... If you talk to any of my, my brides I've spoken to, the sex usually comes in at the end. At the end. It is usually bothering. They ask you, why? Why don't we start with this? Because I tell them it is like an icing on the cake. There is much more, much more than the sex itself. What is the men's equivalent of a bridal shower? It's a groom shower. A groom shower? Yes. In my whole time, I've been doing, at least every weekend I do a bridal shower for women. But I've only done two for men. And these this, this two for men, there were women in there. But these guys were dragged in there. People that are getting married and some other guys. So one thing I They're discussed. dragged by their, their, yeah, their yeah. wives to be. Exactly. Who are the ones who organize the If you were married shower. already and others were single, but they were dragged. The ladies organized, but they called me. There were more men. But tell you what, there's something that surprised me when I was in a groom shower of sorts. The men were taking notes and the men were recording. And then they asked me, Brian, society believes that we don't need these things, but it's just because we don't have an open platform to share these things. When a man comes up and asks a question about this whole thing, there's a way we are shunned. Men don't open up at all about these things. But I've been in two of them. One thing I will tell you and all people that are watching is bridal showers and groom showers are supposed to be a must. 
Because there's many things that are yeah. happening in society that we don't agree with. There are families who can never talk about nothing sexual with their children. There's a man who came to me, he's 30, he's getting married, but he's telling me he has no relationship with any woman in, I mean, in his life. So he will hurt this woman always because he has nothing attached. True. There's no attachment. So the reason why we have many, actually, 70% of the breakups in marriages are based on the man. They come from the man's side. If we have men sorted in these groom showers, trust me, we'll have less, less, less of the, the heartache with, with these kind of things. Because everything that is happening is because men don't know what to do, don't know what to say in a certain context. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was speaking to a friend of mine earlier, and he's, he's a bit conservative, so he was giving me their, their view. Yeah. And he was saying they, they used to be a rite of passage ceremonies for men, right? So um, that point of transition from childhood to manhood, and so uh, that's when they'd have these conversations. They sit them down and, you know, they're spoken to about this. Yeah. Or I think even in some cultures, when you're having that week of circumcision, there's a whole week of conversation that's taking place. I have seen fathers who fear telling their sons something. That, hey, you, you're growing up, you've got to shave uh, so that you don't do this and this. So many men don't. I have had a lot of men come to me and say, I want to talk to my son. He's just 16. Please, they send him over to us. The reason why it's very more, it should be emphasized, because what Lynette can tell a girl, a mother may not tell her, but she needs to hear. I have women who say, Brian, can I bring you my girl? I'm like, no, no, no. I don't deal with girls that are below 18. Please, I have my female counterparts. You take them there. You know what I mean? So it's important for us to understand that as much as these things are in play, the men need it more, but they don't have where to find it. Men are not like, like cheeky cheeky. The women who fuss about it to just go do understand. Women like sure. information, but men don't know where to find it. So we need to probably throw it out there. Even mm -hmm. the men that call you about certain issues, mm -hmm. they are beating about the bush. They cannot be direct until I'm yes. like, hey, come to my office. Come to my office. And, you, and then he's there, he's just lying to even tell him, man, it's getting hard to get it up. He can't. But he simply cannot communicate it because society has branded <laughs> us that it's for women. Women seek information. Women go to hospitals. Women go everywhere. The day you see a man seek for help is when things are shut completely. That's when you go to hospital or oh. find help. Let's take a break <laughs> and, and we'll start with you when we come back. Okay. Welcome back. We're coming to you from the Kampala Serena Conference Center in Room. Tonight we're talking about pre-wedding conversations and what advice uh, young people are taking at bridal and groom showers. I'll go back to Linda's thread. So there's, there's, there's a line where she says, listening to a married woman tell a soon-to-be married woman that... I, I need you to read this, Linda. So translated, to, mm -hmm. to have a successful marriage, you have to carry yourself like a stupid person, right? Yes. You basically. act to be stupid. Yes, uh, but this you is something stupid. that is, was told at a bridal shower. Yes. No, I think the moral in that, what she was trying to communicate is, is that, that every relationship has got to get somebody who bends on the other law side. But in this aspect, because you are the one being talked to, they will say that just to communicate. It's a figurative speech. Not specifically you've got to be a dummy, I mean, in this marriage, but you know there are certain things that women cling into, yet yeah, they could pass. Is this the same thing you tell the men as well, or is it this Yeah, 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 some things like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some things you people cling on, yet you can let them pass. You tell the men to act stupid? No, 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 not acting stupid, but letting some things pass. In that aspect, I'm thinking she meant let some things pass. You know what I mean? Not everything you say, you, you, you see, you must talk about. There's some woman who came to me and the problem of the fight was when the guy brings the socks, Every day, for, I mean, it's just littering the, the, the socks everywhere. So she's got to pick up socks every day. <laughs> I mean, this guy, after he, he has to break down the, 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 the paste in the middle and then he doesn't cover it, that's the big problem. <coughs> so I'm thinking what she meant, there's, it, there's no fuss there. If you find the, the paste being pressed in the middle, put it together and put it again, then move on. Instead of fighting because there's something that has not been done. I'm thinking being a foolish in this category meant just let some things pass. Okay. Uh, well, I'd like to apologize to our audience that is listening because I, I can hear uh, 
drum beat. So there's a function that's taking place within the area and the sound might be leaking. But yes, go on. Okay. I don't believe in that, um, in that thing of letting something pass. I believe okay. in a marriage, you should talk about everything. Because what you ignore today might become so big. It keeps growing. It keeps growing. You know, something starts as a mistake, then it turns into a habit. Because someone feels... Accommodates it because yes, they've been told. Exactly. Someone thinks she has not complained about it. I think she's okay with it. I think he's okay with it. No, you don't keep quiet. If I see it today and it happens tomorrow, of course I'll talk about it. I always tell the ladies not to keep quiet because in most cases, these ladies are told to keep quiet. Keep quiet. Act stupid, act dumb, just look. There's even a lady as at a bridal shower. As I'm also a singer. I do bridal showers, but I was invited for another nice. bridal shower somewhere. Mm -hmm. And this lady was telling people, if you feel there's this urge for you to talk and you can't keep quiet, get water, collect in your, <laughs> collect in your mouth so you cannot talk. <laughs> so you just keep in there like a statue. You don't talk. But why? People are dying of hypertension in, in, in relationships because they have stored so much yes. in their hearts. There's a lot in their heads. When you find... Um, that's why there's also this saying of when you find um, when you find a man and a woman driving and everyone is looking their side they look so gloomy you know that is a couple but why because they have not been able to talk okay. i believe when we talk and talk and talk it is okay to talk than storing the anger okay well linda raised pertinent issues so i want to go through her but please say something yes uh in that regard of um, the need to talk when when, when issues arise. I feel like if we water it down to, you know, don't sweat small things. Don't, you know, it's, it's something small. You can never know what small is, okay, yeah. in, in someone's life. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, um, most of the things we are told not to sweat eventually get us to feel like, okay, you're in this position where you ought to. Because really we're always, our, wing, our wings are always being clipped by society in different ways mm -hmm. at home, you know, where you're told, you know, this is your place in the, in, in the home. You have to get married It's time. Where is the guy? Where is... So basically, don't furnish your home yet. The guy will be intimidated. Okay? So, <laughs> serious. <laughs> Maya told me that. <laughs> and she's watching. <laughs> <laughs> so, you already have that going in your, in, in, in your society. You have that going in your churches where, you know, when, when are you getting the guy? You should get married. And then you also already have that in your system where you're wondering okay i am the one who suffers from the biological clock maybe i should get married soon enough all right so now you get into this kind of conversation with people and they are telling you uh, so already you you feel like this was a prized possession like lucky me to be the one who is married when you're going through issues you're always going to you go like i, I, I can't afford to have conflict in my marriage and it. therefore I'm going to be the one to submit. Um, and every now and then you're going to be the one to always, you know, yield. Okay, sorry. Are you mad? Okay. You know, let's make let's mend fences. And it's a bad thing. It's a good thing in the sense that, yes, uh, you know, that the, the peace this stays in the home. Well. The peace stays in the home. The kids, <laughs> you know, are, are looking at, the, at, at you guys and feeling like, okay, you know, everything is going fine. But what's happening within you? Let me give you an example. If a woman is, if your wings are clipped for a very long time in a marriage, listen, I have watched people married for a long time and the husband passed away. This lady was educated and she got grounded, okay? She married someone older than her. She got grounded in the home. She didn't work, gave birth to kids and she was a housewife and she was well taken care of, being submissive as you know, as, as you all advise us to be. And the guy passed <laughs> away, all right? So he's left investments to a lady who cannot manage them. Okay. And they were all run down, all right? Because she's used to being taken care of. She's used to, you know, taking orders from somewhere else, you know. So what should we do? What do you suggest we do? She is not a participant. She's not a party in this. Okay. She's just being told, do this, do the other, do the other. So another person saying that passes away. Mind you, and that's a time when the kids are also old enough. Oh, okay. They have watched the, the, the mother, you know, raise them in that kind of way where everything is being done Maybe by daddy. She says, why can't we set up committees and reasonably equip our sisters? Why can't we perhaps make appointment for her, appointments for her to see, number one, a financial advisor to explore options that have worked for other couples and individuals, widen her choices, money markets, buying shares, all of that. There's something I want to hit briefly. Yes. 
you see you talked about submiss submission or sub mm. being submissive being submissive you're not supposed to be told to be submissive it's a natural thing if you find yourself finding it difficult to submit to this guy please don't marry them if you find it hard to, to, to submit to somebody True. don't marry them if you see like there's something lacking don't marry the person you're going to always fight for that submission is an automatic thing meaning you're going to esteem him high it's automatic but if you feel like there's this kind of grading or down please don't marry for, for, for your own sake. We have a lot of equipped women, very assertive women. You, need, you see, assertiveness sometimes shades off to men as if that girl is a quickie, that girl is crazy. I can't right really man. handle that, you know? But you're being assertive in, in a sense. It only takes a man who understands, okay, she's just assertive. She just needs to be put in her place to understand. So she needs to be what? Assertive. I mean, she she's needs to be put in her place. No, no, she needs to be told, okay, being assertive doesn't mean you're on top of me. What's her place? Let's pla her place to that. understand is you're a wife to me, meaning that we are supposed to be, you're supposed to be a helper to me, not I, a I director. I think this conversation is, if we, if we try to understand <coughs> this part, it's going to get out of line. Yes. And yes. we're not going to end because it will become a whole argument. Okay. But what I'd like us to give more attention is That's the great. issues she raises on why are we not equipping these women. So she speaks about a financial advisor. She speaks about a reproductive health expert to discuss family planning options, side effects, and perhaps hear real life stories from other women. Postnatal depression is real too, extreme, but can be treated. Connect her to a good doctor you know, with whom you hope she'll grow comfortable. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a woman's rights uh, civil society organization to get her to understand that laws to protect her exist and what to do if things go sour, because they do for many, as you quote. Okay. A lawyer to take her through the Succession Act, get her to understand how to write a will. Women sometimes are thrown out of homes when the husband passes on, and I think that's what you were saying earlier. That's very good. Um, and then you also say, let me even stretch and even dare ask that you subscribe <laughs> okay. her to self-defense classes. And you say, what, what's this? But in Pula Nang, I had lost someone to a violent relationship. So at the time when I was writing that post. Yes. So, um, it, it, you know, my anger had, you know, been riled up and stuff like that. So I feel like a woman should, should, should kind of like protect herself before it happens to her. Yes, I'd like you to respond uh, to this Sengalinet, just to the suggestions that she's made. Yeah. Um, she's very right. Because a marriage, like I said before, it is not only about that SEX. No. It is not. Well, um, I told you my sessions take three hours, and people find them uncomfortable because they are too long. There is one to, there is one to, there is one me to skip and go to the end. Isn't that the expectation that people have been given about what a bridal shower or a groom's Yes, sh but now be? mine come in very different, and I've also noticed that those that have that have attended mine find a very big difference. Because they are relate to them. We had a certain bridal shower and they say this. A certain bridal shower, they say this. You're saying this. I think you're right. So what because do you tell them? Me, I will tell you everything. Uh, we shall talk about the finances. We shall talk about the children. We shall talk about what, you, what, what might happen when you're pregnant and how to handle and all that. Because when someone is getting into a relationship, they've never been married. They've never had children before. Yeah? And they don't know what is going to happen. Even this man doesn't, doesn't know what is going to happen because he has not fathered before, he has not had a woman before, he has not had someone in the bed, in the house, pregnant, and they don't know what is going to happen. So I usually tell them all that is there to expect. Okay. So when it comes, it is not news. Okay. Even when I'm talking to the men, I tell them what to do when what happens. If, if it all fails, then they can seek counseling, counseling okay. from a professional. If it's about financials, then maybe you go for this uh, financial literacy training and see how to handle. But in most cases, lately, what is breaking up marriages mostly is about finances. Because a woman feels she should have her money because her friend made her money and then the guy remarried another person and then brought in another woman and the woman took her money and things like that. Now they come in with that bias. I can't share my money with my husband. Even the man knows the father has been told. He has actually grown seeing the father never gives money at home. Even when he leaves 20,000, he needs accountability. I need my balance. I, you said you're going to buy tomatoes <laughs> of 5,000 and this and this and this. So I expect a balance of 500 shillings in Zagala. No. I'll tell them what to do. 
All right, so again, Lynette, let's take a, a, a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. We are talking today about uh, pre-wedding conversations and what advice young people are taking uh, from bridal showers and groom's showers um, before they get married. So, Linda, one of the things that you say is that if you want the bridal shower to stay cool, why don't we inv invite maybe a couple of such people then? So this is a financial literacy consultant, um, somebody to talk about maybe family planning somebody to talk about all of these different aspects yes. what do you guys think that when you're going for these bridal showers that you carry along one of these people let everyone in society okay. and the ladies organizing the bridal showers that we have a lot of people who are posing to be kojas and singers and are giving the wrong information mm -hmm. invite somebody that is very very inform, inform, informed about certain things make a lot of research because in, in the bridal showers that I've done, I've talked about finances, I've talked about the legal aspect of marriage, I've talked about the medical side because I, I, I do a lot of medicine kind of thing. So the thing is, if you're getting whoever you're getting for your bridal shower, just get somebody who is very informed about certain things. My problem lately is all bridal showers attempt to be sexual. You go to a place where you're talking about real life issues and the girls go like, uh-uh-uh. Yeah. Uh-uh-uh. Sure. They don't we, want to hear them. Yes, they, they want like, to hear oh, about we've the had that. We've been, We've grown up learning about, you know, these things. All we need to hear is the real thing. But what she, Linda is saying, they're all right. But the problem is how do we approach all those things? Because this is a marriage. Every, every problem needs to be addressed a particular way. Today you have a, a problem when you're dealing with one million. Trust me, two years down the road when you're dealing with 50 million, it's a different story. The other day I was dealing with a girl who is earning like $10,000 and the guy is earning one million. Yeah, one million a month. She works with the UN, and then she comes home. She brings a TV screen. She brings a, a, a <laughs> big, a big fridge without telling the man. There were a, a big fight there. So how are you under this? Learn how to communicate your finances to this man. This brings me back to the point where you said a, a woman's place. Oh, yeah, the woman's place. Sorry about the 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 the, the, the communication of putting woman in a place. We just it. want to be sure that you 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 did not mean. I, do, I didn't mean beating. Even men need to be put in their place of being of being supportive of the woman. Be a man. Be a woman. When you're a man, you've got to provide. But when you're a man, you've got to love your wife. You have, you have to handle her with care. That's being in your position as a man. Okay. So yes. I think one of the other things that Linda brings out is that you, she says, mm -hmm. the more you glorify the institution as perfect, as long as you're clean, good at sex and cooking, the more you'll feel ashamed. Women will feel ashamed if they have issues. So is it that this, is it, Linda, are you trying to say that they, they seem to make it seem like these are the things you must be perfect at for it to work? Yeah. I feel like um, the focus is a lot on gratification <laughs> in that sense. But um, beyond that, there's, there's not much conversation really. Just make sure that you are available. <coughs> you know, even if you quarrel or anything, just be available for goodness sake you know so and be good at it oh my goodness make sure that you don't give the person a reason to go away basically even if he cheats it's your it's your fault it's your fault you, you know are you not are not good, good at enough. it so okay. um people start looking at the bedroom as should i say what keeps the marriage the gist of the marriage exactly so there's so much that you're going to have to interact with on a daily the person could have found you with a business right so you're wondering how am i going to uh run this am i going to run this alone or am i going to run this together and that's for the guys as well she could have found you with investments um you could have had a child from a previous marriage okay so how are you going to do that how are you going to be co-parenting are you um I, I, I mean is the child okay with the, the, the new mother coming um is the other mother okay with the child coming over these days now that you have another wife coming you know yeah. so there's 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 lots of things going on is your family <coughs> fine with um them being you being married to her is at, at this you, like you know, conversations you then have yes you know you know you know what linda mm -hmm. i think what is bringing in the biggest problems now is because people are marrying for different reasons someone will get married to someone that i've just seen today they don't know anything about them but uh, to my own understanding and what i've grown to know actually is 
first make sure this person is your friend first befriend this person if someone is your friend is your if your spouse is your friend everything will be very easy you'll even talk about the hardest things you've ever thought you would ever discuss with anyone I've even seen programs on different television saying I'm looking for a woman who has a, this person must have at least at least a master's degree then the person must have <laughs> must be earning at least more than 1.5 million <laughs> this person must be earning and they're looking for a spouse to marry and you're asking yourself why because lately the women just want to sit they want to be provided they want to, be, to want they want to be given everything but I mean your role is to provide if I come in to give something in a home then that is added advantage you get it but that does not mean you should put me down and stay home keep home and then you start violating my rights because I have a right to work because okay. you found me the profession but does not that does not command me to do your roles all right that, you that's, get where, my, that's because where my point was we need to educate the men more because everyone you have the bridal shower the women look look to be so much informed yeah. than the men yeah. even the way men are groomed lately you get it, Josephine. You find a man is at their parents' place. Is at 35, actually even more than 35. They're still right. comfortable. Right. The mom is buying them everything they need. You it's get it. Nice. There is a maid to wash. There is a maid to polish the shoes. There is a maid to prepare the whatever they need. They are in a wear. Everything is prepared and put in order the way they want them because their mothers dictate. Make sure my son, my son lives this place at 6.30. You make sure everything is set. Breakfast is ready. The so when he's is getting ready, married, he's everything. marrying a washing machine. So when he gets married, yes. he expects the wife to do the same. Okay. Forgetting that the other person who was preparing these things, that was her only job. And then they even remind the lady, by the way, me I grew up in a home where my mother used to do everything. Everything. I expect the at same. At these conversations we actually have at Groom's Showers. Yeah, we have a lot. Yes. There's one I didn't because I, I feel that all the attention usually is put on, on a woman to make a marriage. Exactly. Work. So a man will tell you, but that's what I grew up seeing. Peter is, is asking, why is it that only most singers, the people dispensing this advice, are either single or, or have failed in their own relationship? Let me answer men? that. Okay. You see, many singers that are not married, the problem is with the men. Men fear talent. Are you, but you're. Yeah, I am engaged. You are a man. Yes, but what so I'm the saying problem. is, it's okay. about men. All the girls are not married. They say, I have many singers who are not married. But the reason why is because it's the challenge is with the men. Men fear challenge. Men don't want to take up the position of like, this woman knows a lot. So they fear attacking them. And they don't want to be advised. Yeah, and they don't want to be told what to do. The other thing is, a policeman receives more bullets than a civilian. So because she's in this kind of thing, <laughs> everyone will attack her in a different perspective. There are people who relate with us like a koja, not knowing there's a Brian before the koja, there's a Lynette before the singer job. Are you aware a teacher can train you in chemistry, but when you're given a paper, the same paper, you might win the teacher? Exactly. So it does not mean only the marriage should give you advice. Actually, those that are not married might have the most important message for you because they will tell you why they lost theirs marriage. and then you'll know what to do. Also, you know, in, in that regard of... Um why, why would a single have anything to say anyway? Um, I feel like um, everyone in society, society is a system, mm -hmm. really. So we relate with each other in different ways. We relate as siblings, as um, friends, as you know, different things. So now if I'm single, for example, it's very easy for someone who is married to say, bring their kids over to my home if they have issues in their marriage for them to, you know, first put out the fire as the kids are at mine. Why? Because they don't have other kids to take care of and they think, hmm, she has all the time, all right? So their kids are at my home and I'm taking care of them as they're sorting things out. Also, it's easy for them to say, give me a loan of, say, this much money to pay school fees. You don't have because they think I don't have things to do with my money, all right? Also, it's easy for them to, to say, you know, let me go and pour out my heart to her because she has the time again. So if there's anyone who wants marriages to work, it's a single person. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Okay, you don't, you don't want to carry the, the weight of it. Exactly. That's your final count, Linda, on this conversation. Mm -hmm. We're closing it up. Um, yes, and um, also in that regard, please, 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 like, make sure that everything is covered in the sense that you're going, you're going in there with your head, please keep your head, don't lose it. Don't get in there and, you know, break your spine in, in, in the sense that you now start being provided for and then eventually if that ground is put, pulled from under you, you have nowhere to start from. Okay. You've been educated, you've been equipped, stay with all that going in your life, okay? 
continue uh, being, uh, you know, you know, giving advice where I need be uh, putting input in, in all these things. All right. Uh, all if right. you have investments, sign as a co-owner, <laughs> not as a witness. With the two of you, I just like to close by hearing you out on this issue. So Linda says, having to reluctantly agree to a bougie restaurant with pricey meals, a dress code for which we need to do shopping, a deposit for cake, decor, photography, videography, name all the other unnecessary things. And we're all doing all this for a bridal shower. So bridal showers have become very commercialized. So it loses quite a bit of what it should be when you spend more effort in the color scheme, the... Yes, I would say... Very briefly. My, yes, I would yeah. say there are they're losing they're losing it like you're saying because um i've been at a bridal shower where you call to have this talk and then they feel uh they need to do the cake they need to do the photography they need to do the videography they need to do the attire and the, you know they're collecting a lot of money for this that this that but they're forgetting that the most important thing is what is is what this lady is going into the information yes the information the lady needs to be informed about what to expect and what to do when okay. what happen, when what happens because if they're not told the cake the decoration the music the attires the what all that will not be exactly be right. useless when okay. she gets there all right and the final thing Brian, this one is for you um so they say saying guys all read from a template so you're coming but you're coming to meet different characters who you meet at this bridal shower is a different character from the next one but mm. you have the same template you don't know how they are brought up you don't know what their culture says no. you don't know their religion you, you just come and you're giving the same speech not templates is there a template? No, there is no template, but I'm going to draw things into two. Very quickly. Yes. There's what we call intellect and instinct. In instinct is what we naturally know, and intellect is what we learn. Because it's the same thing. Marriage is marriage. Whatever the case is, marriage in the U.S., marriage in Uganda is the same. So when we're giving information to these people, we're giving them what we think is best because of intellect, what is natural, what is we've learned, and what is natural. Relationship is learned. Human resource is learned. But natural knowing that I'm a mother, I'm a woman, it's a natural thing, it's instinct. So it is no template of thought, but it's just that we need to learn to apportion things the right way they should be. Put things in A where A should be and B should be. If I tell you A is here and B is here, it's not a template. It's something that is natural. It comes natural. You know? So it is. So does that mean that the person you're coming to speak to at their bridal shower, maybe you've spent a bit of time with them and you you know them even a little bit, or you're just coming, sit That's in the group and say, sharing. who is the bride? You? People, let me tell you. Me tell you there's a way they do. Sometimes they send you information about these things. Hi, Brian, we are 30, we are all young. Uh, we are punk people. Please don't talk about the local things. We don't want. We want this. And the bride is coming from yes. the UK. Okay. And they list, they list why. few things. And then there's one I went to, Brian, this is a Catholic woman. She's been married for five years. She's just doing a wedding. Mm. Please come. They give you details prior, so you come when you know what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then in the interaction, we, we, me and the teacher, we talk, we like talking all through. So you get to learn each other. Mm -hmm. give you the and because we are a therapist, I'll look at and you and I start doing body language study on you, and then I'll help you understand certain things. Do you think I've been doing body language on you? I'm worried. All right. Well, thank you all so much for taking the time to speak with us. That, that, that's been our show for this week. And TV Weekend Edition is coming up. Keep it on TV. Monthly basic bouquet subscription of 18,000 shillings before it expires. Then enjoy three free days only on Star Times. Enjoy digital life.